If you do get the odd rogue stone in compost, it'll uh, cause the carrot to try and grow round it. That's when you get your, your ugly carrots, if, if you like, right. if there's such a thing. Um, So we're going to uh, set some carrots in these tubs this afternoon. We sighted them near some marigolds because the marigolds will mask the scent of the carrots once the carrots germinate and come through. What, what the marigold does, it, it, it hides the, the scent of the carrot from the carrot root fly. Um, the carrot root fly flies along and it's, it's looking for the scent of the carrot. Whenever you come past your carrots, all I do is just have a little waft at the marigolds or whatever it is you're growing that you're trying to mask the scent of um, and that will stop the carrot root fly being able, being able to find your, your carrot bed. Other things you can grow nearby are things like um, garlic, onion, anything with a strong scent that will mask the, the scent of the carrot. Um, so this variety that we're going to set in one of these pots is called um, a rainbow mix and it's actually got five different varieties mixed in with it. It's not a variety in itself. It's got five different other varieties mixed together. So we've selected pots or tubs that are sort of 18 inches, 24 inches deep. And that's really just so we've got the depth for the carrots to grow in. Um, hopefully you're going to get carrots that are 9, 10, 12 inches long, um, nice and straight. We've got a good fine compost. Um, I've checked it to make sure there's no stones or clumps of compost in it, which can cause your carrots to to sort of bend or split um, or fork. Yeah, we've put we've we've got drainage holes in the bottom and we've put um, broken crockery over the top. And how that helps is that it it stops the actual holes in the pots or the tubs from clogging up with soil or compost. So the compost will sit on top of the crock and the water will drain through the crock and then out through the holes in the, the bottom of the pots. You can also just raise your pot off the ground as well. Um, but these have actually got a, a raised ridge around the bottom, so there is a, there is a gap anyway. Um, and that prevents the, the water sitting in the pot. Uh, so we've got a nice fine blend of peat-free compost in there. Yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah, some, some varieties uh, such as, I think it's called Paris Market, they'll only grow round, yeah. like, almost yeah. like a radish. Yeah. Um, and others, your chantony, that sort of thing, they'll grow longer. Yeah. Um, and it, it can just depend on the variety. So if you grow, if you grow carrots and you want the large carrot, um, just check on the packet um, to, to make sure that it's going to grow to the length that you want it. Um, so the seed, is very fine, but it does need burying about half an inch deep, right. so one and a half centimetres, just uh, making sure it doesn't blow away because it is fine. Um, and it does smell quite nice, it smells of carrot, um, and that even that can attract the carrot root fly. So, all I'm going to do is just we're not going to put a lot in here because obviously there's not a, a massive, massive amount of space, and we need. Um, space for the carrots to, to thicken out and develop. If you put too many seeds in, you'll have to thin them out, and that again can cause the scent to, to rise and attract the carrot root fly. And also you're disturbing the, the, the plant itself. So yeah. nice and thin. Yeah, I'm just trying to make sure it doesn't blow away because it's quite breezy yeah. today. Yeah, I've got it. Yeah, yeah right. so all I'm going to do is just take a pinch, and you can see where they land because of the, the lighter colour. So don't be too concerned if you get a couple close to one another. You can try and pick them out if you wish, but I don't bother. And you can go quite close up to the side as well. You want to try and use all the surface of the pot if you can. And the beauty of um, being in a pot like this is the fact that if you want, you can turn the, you can turn it, you can pick it up and move it. You know, if you're not happy with the location of it, just, just move it. Yeah, especially this sort of size, you know. You, I mean, in these big beds, we can actually move these with a forklift because they sat on a pallet. But obviously that's not practical in a, on a balcony or in a small courtyard garden. Um, so that's that packet empty. I've not put a full packet in. This is a, a packet I've already sewn some of, so don't think you've got to use the whole packet. Um, what sort of length will they be then? There'll be a variety. I would imagine they'll be, they're all sort of of a, of a 
a length. They're not the sort of golf ball shaped ones. So anything from three, maybe down to a foot long, depending on the variety. And they're all different colors, which is quite nice. Um, so I'm just gonna cover it with about half an inch of compost. Again, I'm just checking it as I'm putting the compost on that there's no lumps or stones or anything in it. Um, and again, just about half an inch covering, one and a half centimetres. Uh, not got to be exact. It will settle itself down once I water it. So, again, if you're growing on a balcony or in a little courtyard, this is ideal. So I'm just firming it down to make sure the seed's in contact with the compost. Um, and in the other pot, we're going to grow a diff different variety. And this is just the uh, Chantony Red Cord. And these are a bigger carrot, a longer carrot, so... It's quite a popular common variety. Yeah, yeah, it's a tried and tested variety. So um, we've grown it before here and it, it's done pretty well. So again, this is a... a, a Again, a pack that we've we started using earlier in the season. We've got carrots through in the in the garden. So again, just make sure the compost is nice and even and levelled off. And again, you see the cat that seed's slightly darker. Oh yeah. It's exactly the same sort of seed. Um, but again, just a pinch of it. Just go it yeah, right round this. The whole thing. We're probably putting about maybe 20, 30 carrots in there. From that, if, if all the seed germinates and we keep it watered, you won't need to feed it. Um, they're, not, they're not a massively hungry plant other than water, but you need the water to drain as well. And obviously, because yeah, yeah. it needs to be on a fine soil. So as long as you've got the drainage right and you keep the keep it watered. Once, we, um, once we've sown them and we water them today, we'll keep them moist till they germinate. Um, and then um, just be careful with the watering because you want the carrot to look for the water. That's what makes it go down into the soil. Um, so don't keep it saturated at the top because you might find that it's not going to develop a big carrot. You want the carrot, yeah. You, you want the carrot to, to look to send the tapered root down virtually to the bottom of the pot if you can. But the other thing is if you don't water it enough, they might go to seed. So if you, if you let it go completely bone dry, the carrot. I'll think it's dying and it'll try and set seed. Um, if it's a cool week um, with a little bit of rain or whatever, you might need to water it once a week. Yeah. It's just a matter of monitoring it. If you've noticed, I've not put the compost right to the top either. So I've left it a gap. So again, hopefully that can deter the, yeah. the root fly from flying across the, the, the surface of the soil. Um, no guarantee. Um, but again, like I said, we've got the companion planting at the side of it. Yeah. And the other thing is about it as well, the less thinning you do, the less you disturb the carrot, the less you let the scent out into the atmosphere to attract the fly. So if you don't make any scent, they won't find the carrot. Um, and once they're, once they're, what they do is they just lay their eggs in the in the carrot itself. And then once you start trying to eat the carrot, it has like a little maggot in it, and it just it just ruins the whole the whole carrot. Yeah. Make sure they've had a drink. If your carrots are going green on the top. What you can do is, with them being in a container like this, yeah. you can pop a little bit more compost in amongst them yeah. to cover the tops over. It's the sun that makes them go yeah. green. Now, it does um, make the carrots have a, like a, a slight toxin in them, oh, right. um, which can give you an upset stomach if you eat too much of it. But um, like, like, like with potatoes, yeah, just cut that bit off. Um, but if you don't want to do that, the other thing as well about earthing them up a little bit is that can protect them from carrot root fly as well. So if you're covering the top of your carrots up with, say, some more compost once they're in the pot, when they germinated and got to a certain size, don't, don't sort of bury the whole thing. No. Just sort of put half, a hint, half an inch of compost on to cover the top of the carrot. And uh, that'll stop the sun getting to them, stop them going green. And it can also prevent the carrot root fly laying their eggs into the carrot, top of the carrot. Perfect.